start. You don't sort of go eight o'clock and into it. You sort of relax and scratch your arse and read the paper and look out the window. Well, this is me at my work. This is, this is me. I'm doing it. I'm not in a yop scheme. This is what I do. <laughs> Easy, isn't it? Well, I've thought a great deal about what I should say to you and how I should conduct myself tonight in front of you. <laughs> and it's, it's been a real problem for me. Because usually I, 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 um, I relax into the more profane language very early yes. in the game. So I think I could do it quick and relax. Fuck this! <laughs> so, oh, that's much better. <laughs> it's just like a quick belt in the banjo. Oh, fuck! <laughs> right, now that we're at home. I thought it would be nice. I, I can hardly hit sort of a... You know what I mean? It's because I come from a, from a place where people... I swear, all, I've sworn all my life. You see, I, I swear, like, all the time. And I, and I think it's rather good language. People say it's, it's, a, it's a limited vocabulary. It makes you swear. Well, I don't think so. See, uh, and uh, because my vocab... I know at least, oh, my God, about 127 words. <laughs> <laughs> and I still prepare fuck. <laughs> You see, I've never found the English equivalent for fuck off. <laughs> and, and it isn't go away. Because go away kind of dissipates, doesn't it? It goes, go away. <laughs> for go away, shoo. Shoo. <laughs> go away, go away. There's no conscience like, fuck off. <laughs> It always works, you know. And, and you never read, fuck off, he hinted. <laughs> <laughs> so what I thought I'd tell you, in case, <laughs> in case you want to ask me something, <laughs> I bet you don't know. <laughs> now that you know the answer. <laughs> And it's awful. Every time I open my eyes, I'm looking at one of my heroes. It's like a nightmare. <laughs> I did this once before, you know. It was in the year that the Scotland qualified to play in jail. You know, Scotland always qualify. You have to think of the year. I think it was <laughs> 74 or something. They we were playing in Germany. And the guy who was supposed to make money for them kind of uh, ripped them off. The Scottish football team, that is. And they ended up uh, by being given a sort of a six-month loan of a Vauxhall. <laughs> <laughs> Jet set stuff, isn't it? <laughs> you own a Vauxhall for six months. So, the, <laughs> Willie Ormond, who was the manager, asked me to go down and entertain the team, and it was hellish. It was just this room full of Dennis Laws and Billy Bremner's. I did the whole thing with my eyes shut. I was I open my eyes. God, I was the best laxative I've ever known. So, <laughs> Yeah, so I was going to tell you a bit about myself. You probably know a lot because I've kind of become the darling of the chat shows. But I, <laughs> but I should tell you, I lie a lot. So, some of it wasn't true. I've made myself very windswept and interesting as the years <laughs> have rolled on. Because I was born a sort of fart. <laughs> you know. <laughs> I said, I've tried everything to be exotic. You know, and I've fought being plain all my life, but it keeps coming back. I always look... Pl when I buy something expensive, I look as if I stole it, you know? <laughs> but that's a look about me. You know, people give me presents, you know? Like Cartier glasses, and the police go, where'd you get them? <laughs> they stole them out of a car. So it's, it's weird, you know? I've got this mark on me that says, nothing. <laughs> And I don't know where it is. I've, God knows I've tried everything. But it's, I was born in Anderson in Glasgow. And it's a, sort of down at the dockside there. And uh, I don't remember it much because we left when I was about three or four. And I was brought up in Partick in Glasgow, where Partick Thistle originally came from, the football team. Partick Thistle FC. I say that because most Englishmen think they're called Partick Thistle Nil. Right? <laughs> I 
And, <laughs> and they're always good for a laugh, you know, Patrick Thistle. And, uh, yeah, what can I say? I was brought up as a Catholic in Partick, and it was okay. Uh, <laughs> I got A-level guilt, you know. And, uh, yeah, every time I interfere with myself, I think I'm going to hell, you know. Yeah, it was an OK education for everybody else. I think I spent most of the time just watching pigeons screwing in the reef. The, 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 that was it. That was the education. I, I, but I was very lucky because there was full employment on the Clyde, you know, and uh, that was the way of Glasgow then, the sort of the shipyards. The schools opened their doors and the shipyards opened theirs and everybody poured in. And I became a welder. I was actually becoming an engineer and joined the wrong queue. <laughs> And it's the truth, because you know, there was everybody had jobs, go like, engineers this way, Mr. Hughes, and I joined the wrong line and became a welder. And I started being an apprentice welder without even knowing what a welder was. I didn't know what you pressed to make it work, for Christ's sake. The stuff, eh, that was it. And I joined the Territorial Army to make myself a bit more exotic. Uh, I did, I did, it was the Parachute Regiment. And I got my red berry, and I, I looked like acne. <laughs> I had my uniform and I got my wings and everything. And we did an exercise once. It was a complete and utter waste of time, as the entire Territorial Army is. We did an exercise. It is, it's a dreadful waste of time and money. I, I swear, I mean, we did an exercise in Cyprus. All us paratroopers in the Carina Mountains with my gun. And we, we, we parachuted out of this plane. And I, as a matter of fact, I parachuted out of the first plane I was ever in. I, I jumped out of the first bloody plane I was in. Aye, it was the ninth flight, I think. Something happened to one of the engines and we had to land and everybody was shitting themselves. I said, I'm great, we're going to land! That was that. The, I landed in Cyprus, I sat on a brick. And it hit me on that bone there, the coccyx. I just about overtook the aeroplane. <laughs> Landed again with a lump on my bum, which has never really gone away. <laughs> and did the rest of the exercise like a giraffe having a drink. <laughs> And it was, it was full of little moments, you know. And we chased, the parachute regiment chased the Green Howards through the mountains for 10 days and we caught one. <laughs> there was thousands of us, armed to the teeth, bayonets down the trousers and it was great, they'll pose it. Everybody looked like Rambo climbing <laughs> At last I'd become exotic and we caught this poor bastard. <laughs> and he worked in the same shipyard as me. <laughs> he was a territorial too. It was great, I could have sneaked up behind him in the canteen and saved the country a fortune. <laughs> and to give you, for those of you who don't know what I do, that, that, was, that, that must include me, really. I've never really understood what I do. But I've, all, I've been intrigued for many, many years, since I was a wee boy, with a, the way ordinary people behave. I've never found famous people awful interesting. It's one of the great letdowns of my life. But when I found ordinary, just, just plain Joe Smiths, I found they do the most incredibly exotic things and make me roar and laugh. If I could give you a wee example, my brother is, uh, th when he told me, I thought I was going to hurt myself. <laughs> I was really, I mean, it just, it just took my breath away. You see, I spent many years working in the shipyards, roaring and laughing at extremely funny men, and wondering why, when I put the television on and watched a comedian, it didn't make me laugh the same way. But this, this is roughly an idea. My brother is a postman, this is the truth. He's a postman, right? He's a... Uh, because about Glasgow doing his post, giving people letters and stuff, as, as his apostmans want. <laughs> <laughs> and at the time, they were pulling down buildings in the area where he delivers his letters. You know, the way they pull down slums and all that. And they had a rather unique way of doing it in Glasgow. The first thing they did was they went into the building 
the tenement, you know, and they've got maybe eight doors, sometimes ten or eleven doors on the, the various houses, depending on how many on the landing, you see. Because sometimes there'll be two houses on a landing with two rooms and a kitchen, and a wee one in the middle with just one room, that was called a single end. And they've tried to, to get rid of them. And they, in, in one way it's a great idea, in another way it's not such a good idea. But anyhow, they took all the doors off the buildings first, and they made a fence with them. You see, round, round, and then they pulled the building down with this fence of doors. And my brother, one day, he went up. <laughs> he's, a, he's a postman, right? <laughs> and he went into the... <laughs> in, in a party, where I come from, he went up into the building and he went to... Or Mr MacDonald, whoever. Went to... <laughs> and it says, Campbell, on the letterbox. So he, he knocks to ask Mr Campbell where Mr MacDonald has gone. And Mr MacDonald opens the door. Hi, oh, hello, son, what is it? Oh, here's your letter. It's your door. It's, oh, yeah. He said, I found this door. <laughs> oh, yeah. He says, aye. It was, in a, it was in a fence along the road there. I thought, I thought it was a cracker, so I've, I've nicked it. <laughs> so, so what he's done, this guy, he's out for a walk with a dog, right? Is it just an ordinary block? I mean, you couldn't write this. Right? He's out for a walk and he goes, God, jeez, that's a great door. <laughs> He's away home with the door, right? <laughs> so he's taking his own door, because it's night, right? He's out with the door, so he's out better, right? So he's taking the door off his own house <laughs> and laying it again, and then taking the good door and put it on. <laughs> so that's a cracker, right? <laughs> this is what they do with my own door, and he thinks, the lavvy needs a door. He, he's got an outside toilet, and the door needs... Right, so he takes his own door. He takes the lavvy door off, and puts his own door on the lavvy, and then takes the lavvy door and puts it back in the fence. <laughs> so, so nobody can, can, can take a fence at all. He's the fence. <laughs> He's got a new door, and so has the lavvy. <laughs> he said, and everything went great until in the morning he went down to the lavvy and he found that burglars had broken into his <laughs> toilet. <laughs> Wonder what the burglar thought. Going right, this house will do. <laughs> Jesus Christ! What deprivation! <laughs> Can you imagine leave the burglar leaving them a couple of bob? <laughs> and so that that's that's roughly. What, what I've tried to do. And I, I've often looked at, at people eh, and thought, my God, because I've been kind of obsessed with sex as well, you see. <laughs> through all these, it took me an extraordinary length of time to lose my virginity. <laughs> oh, God almighty, it was, it was ages. I won't even tell you because you'll talk about me. It's, <laughs> it, was, it was a long time. <laughs> I was tattooed first. <laughs> I mean, it was, it was so long. I had to do it eventually for the sake of my sight. I had to do it. <laughs> it was purely for, for reasons of, oh, visibility. I, oh, I was going mental. I was becoming a funny shape. <laughs> it, was, it was just awful. I, oh, the whole, the whole thing was, oh, Jesus. And I, I used to look at people and wonder how they did it, if they did it. Say, so, now he probably does it. And she probably does it. As a matter of fact, he probably does it to her. I wonder how they do it. <laughs> and I wondered if everybody had been telling me the truth, you know. Did you really, were they, were they taking the mickey? I mean, if I try, if I go like that, they go, get piss off! <laughs> <laughs> to practice on things, you know. <laughs> I've never had a dog or anything. <laughs> so it's weird, you know. I said, read things and sweat a lot. <laughs> and I used to look at big, fat people, huge, obese, gigantic people. 
I said, I bet he does it. And I bet she does it. And I wonder how to do it. And I saw a man being interviewed on television and he was in the Guinness Book of Records for being the most greedy person on earth or something. I mean, the man, he was from Texas and he was the fattest. He was actually kind of lying down <laughs> to be interviewed. He was looking over his waistband, you see. And the thing, I thought I looked at the fly on his trousers. I was like, that was vast. God, it's like, it's like Cyril Smith's trousers. <laughs> and I wonder, where do they sell big Y fronts that size? <laughs> or do you get them custom built, you know? <laughs> so I was looking at this and I thought I was going to count the buttons. I was about 47 buttons. <laughs> and I thought, well, this wave's a huge big woman as well. She was talking away. Oh, it's wonderful to be in the Guinness Book of Records. <laughs> <laughs> And I thought, well, I reckon, do you know? <laughs> I reckon the Neil. Because <laughs> you're Scottish. You, you, you know how it feels to have a wee willy sometimes. <laughs> no, it's not, Scottish people don't have wee willies. I didn't say that, I wouldn't, I'm not guilty of such racist thoughts. <laughs> but I've been on holiday in Aberdeen. <laughs> You're like a sumo wrestler. <laughs> You're going swimming at Aberdeen. <laughs> Gone. Your willy's like a baby's one, there's a wee point on it. <laughs> you feel so stupid when you look at it. <laughs> and the other bit underneath. marble pouch. <laughs> it's like a walnut shell. <laughs> I'm sure he's, this, this man from Texas was a bit like that, I should imagine. I mean, his wee willy show and, it, and his wife would be, her stuff would be under here too. <laughs> so they must sit there like sea elephants up in their knees. Right, Nelly. Okay. Right, grab an armful. Right, up we go. And this wee person appears. And this huge big armful of stuff wobbling. Okay, right, right, right. Okay, more. Right, now. Falls off the bed. <laughs> Fills the whole room. <laughs> left a bit, left a bit, go! <laughs> so that's kind of roughly <laughs> what I think about. <laughs> no, really. I, just, I seem to. I seem to see things. The, the people don't just take. I was in Los Angeles, and this is the truth. There was a sign, and it said, To the Braille School. <laughs> <laughs> I thought, who is it for? <laughs> and I thought, why don't they do all road signs in Braille? People stop and go like that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And it's, it's odd, I must say. But I've always, there's something about a ordinary, I don't understand very much. I'm not saying love me, love me, I'm thick, right? <laughs> but there's a lot of things that my brain won't allow me to understand. You know, because they're so incredibly boring. <laughs> and God knows I've tried. Especially with politics, and you get two pages, you go, oh, bollocks, who cares? <laughs> who cares? <laughs> I mean, that's how I've, I've become a kind of anarchist, you know. 
I think roughly the desire to be a politician should bar you for life from ever being one. I was just watching them. Don't vote. It encourages them. I was watching to watch them. God. I mean, isn't that awful? But anyhow, there's... I, c I tend to look at it slightly different. And I, I look at singers on the telly. And I look at Scottish singers. And I think, what are you doing? <laughs> and you see, and I'm, I'm a Scottish person. Right. You probably noticed. <laughs> and I look at these Scots on telly. These, they're sort of singing shortbread tins. <laughs> you know? It's the whole nation, they're singing about this garbage. <laughs> oh, the mountains over here and the <laughs> over there. <laughs> the in the river and I'm roaming in the gloaming. <laughs> <laughs> Barney Purple Mountains and the <laughs> And the sun is going up. Oh, fuck off! <laughs> I don't even begin to understand that. Because the folk music is actually wonderful, the real, but they avoid that like the plague in order to sing this stuff. And it's all written here in London. <laughs> by strange wee men who have never seen Scotland. And one of them got found out about five years ago. He wrote a song called The Blue Misty Hills of Tyree. But if you've ever been in Tyree, it's like a bloody billiard table. <laughs> The misty blue hills. <laughs> <laughs> and there's this never ending line of Highland weird people. I mean, I'm not saying the Highland people are an amazing race of people, lyrical, nice people, but there's a section who keep turning up on television in Scotland. They're flying Island shirt and a space in the teeth. <laughs> And the wee badger handbag there. <laughs> Mountains and rivers and Bonnie Morag and the Roman and the Gloman. <laughs> and it's a, it's, it's a very strange affair. And then there's the Gallic ones. You've probably seen them. They say hello to you all the time when they're singing. Hello, hello. <laughs> when they're mashing up the Harris Tweed to send it off to me. Say, why are you wearing a Brian Island shirt? <laughs> hey-ho, 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 hey-ho. It's absolute nonsense. <laughs> and we seem to produce in Scotland a kind of religion that's very strange too. It's the most patronising thing in television except for the weather. <laughs> it's Wednesday Willis here. <laughs> yeah, hey, Wednesday Poo. <laughs> I was just thinking, the, 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 your television treat you like you're four years of age. Now, here's the weather. <laughs> <laughs> this is the country where you live. <laughs> This is a wee cloud. <laughs> I really feel brassed off when they do that. They stick clouds and lightning on the board. <laughs> you don't need to do that. I don't know what a cloud looks like. <laughs> Just tell me, I'll understand. <laughs> I mean, what if that carried on to the news? <laughs> Today there was a massacre of. <laughs> 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 Goo running off the desk. You have to behave yourself. I can't get it. But anyway, I was saying, that kind of singing, you know, women, women sing kind of weird up there. They've spoiled a lot of great songs. You know, Robert Burns wrote some real crackers. And they spoil them with that strained... 
Because <laughs> ordinary people sing okay. Not really. <laughs> and the whole thing is organised by people who've got second names instead of first names. Crawford. <laughs> Crawford, have you seen Finlay? <laughs> <laughs> They're alien, the surname clan have taken over. <laughs> Campbell, have you seen Finley? <laughs> oh, he was with Crawford and Torco. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> and the women dancers are great, you know, they're all giving it a bit of that. <laughs> <laughs> and it's funny, <laughs> winsome and buxom, and the men are getting a bit. <laughs> For me, it's a bit strange. <laughs> it's a bit like ballroom dancing's getting the same. Like people doing that. <laughs> what are you doing? If you did that in a Glasgow dance hall, you'd last about 10 minutes. <laughs> an elastic suit or that. No. <laughs> what? What's that? And where's the Pasadobli? Nobody actually does the Pasadobli except them. <laughs> Drunk people on holiday in Spain. <laughs> so, and then religion, as I was telling you. Now, religion's a real growth industry in Scotland. It's, the BBC religious department's got 14 offices. What do they do all day? <laughs> you can't hear the typewriters for the rattling of the rosaries up there. <laughs> so it's, it's very odd. And they've got this never ending procession of wee men who come on at night and tell you how dreadful the world is. <laughs> and then in the most patronizing possible way, try to introduce you to God. <laughs> now, if there's a God, and I suppose there, there is really, because I've always, I've always thought, if you believe in God, if anybody believes in God, there is one, you know? And, and there's, there, it doesn't, it's not up for question. But these wee men come on and try and tell you. And the ones on, on the England on the, the Radio 4 in the morning aren't any better. <laughs> they seem to have this never-ending line of people called Nigel. <laughs> they tell you all about God in a strange fashion. Yes, I went to a football match the other day. <laughs> And you know is the key, right? You know. <laughs> I went to a football match the other day and it was terribly exciting. I, I watched with bated breath. It was Tottenham Hotspur, I believe, they were playing another bunch of chaps. They were very, very good anyway, but the game was rather exciting. And on the way home, I, I said to my son, Nigel Jr., I said... Nigel, I said, yes, Daddy. I said, did you enjoy the game, Nigel? Oh, yes, Father. It was super and terribly exciting. <laughs> Is that all, Nigel? Well, yes, Daddy. But, Nigel, didn't you attempt to think of it on a more spiritual plane? <laughs> did Jesus play for Tottenham Hotspur, Daddy? <laughs> You know, in a funny way, he did. <laughs> My radio's all covered in muesli. <laughs> it's got this sort of pebble dash finish. <laughs> I'm always eating my breakfast and swearing at the radio. <laughs> It's a sort of furry looking radio, like solid porridge. <laughs> it's great. I was going to tell you something else about that. Why? <laughs> These singers, you know, in Scotland, they, they don't. You see, I like the way people sing when, when they go to sing it, you know, like at parties. Now, I've, the worst thing about show business for me is the parties, you know, because they're kind of boring. 
And uh, I mean, I've been at some nice ones and stuff, but most, they're not as good as actual parties. Uh, like I remember from Scotland, and I'm sure people down here, you know, working people all have parties and yeah, unknown people going yeah, and you have a, a you get a, a great deal of booze or whatever is your choice, and you, you go, right, five minutes, Mr. Connolly. Yeah. <laughs> Be with you in a second! <laughs> <laughs> yes! No! <laughs> so, <laughs> I arrive here in a box like that. <laughs> Five minutes, Mr. Connolly. <laughs> yes! <laughs> here! Here! To entertain you! <laughs> I've started touching my willy. <laughs> it's one of my more, my more sort of disconcerting traits recently. <laughs> because I've been talking about people who touch theirs, and it has led me to touch mine. <laughs> and there's a strange comfort to be had. wiggle it about or anything. <laughs> you check it like you check your change or credit cards or... Anyway, I think... I think maybe it's going to fall off as you get older. Like your hair. Perhaps when you're older you lose your willy. <laughs> Panic in your soul. Usually happens to men in the thirties. Happened to me and mine. We are lying in the bath, luxuriating, and you look down. And there's your first grey pubic hair. <laughs> That's your starter for ten. <laughs> it's, oh, and I thought, God, how awful. <laughs> Nobody told me about that. Because <laughs> you don't get, like, Grecian 2000 adverts for the guy. <laughs> you know, the guy walloping it down the front of the jeans. <laughs> That's another thing, that's another thing I love, is adverts. I, lo I love the, 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 the lie. I, li I like lies on that scale, especially, because there's nothing wrong with lies, they're fabulous things. My God, I'm a liar for a living. There's no one to take my word for it, there is no recession. I am loaded. With the Dow Jones Index, I don't even know who the man is. Right. Wouldn't speak to him if I did. So, what was I about to say? I, on a Saturday morning, in the papers, you get these adverts for things that they obviously can't sell. And sh the people have gone, oh, fuck, God. Leave it out. What? You know, a combined cigarette lighter and coat hanger or something. <laughs> Right, so, <laughs> you know those kind of things, you know, hat and shoes to match. So, yeah, you know the kind of thing, you know, open neck flannels, tsh, so, yeah, bowler hat with sleeves, you know the kind of, you know, people have a sort of ideas and they go, that'll take on. <laughs> so, so they, I, like, on a Saturday morning they appear, trench coats, <laughs> smart trench coats. <laughs> <laughs> State size, and, the, and, the, and there's always a drawing. There's never photographs of these. There's always a drawing of, of uh, some other bloody coach. It's certainly not the one you're getting through the post. <laughs> <laughs> and they sell great. Th I've always been tempted to send away, especially for the big slipper. <laughs> Have you seen the big slipper? <laughs> I think these adverts are for people. Who, they're aimed at, at a section of the community who don't go any place. <laughs> they watch the telly all the time. You know, well, I suppose your trench coat, you can watch telly in your trench coat if you like. <laughs> but it's a one big slipper. <laughs> and you put your two feet in it. <laughs> and you watch... And you watch television. <laughs> in your slipper. And you... <laughs> 
went to the family can have a slip and eat. <laughs> I was always going to buy two. I was going to buy a pair and leave them in the fireplace. <laughs> when I'm going out at night, yeah, I guess a burglar comes in. Who wants to hear my chance? And have it, have it on one of those sensitive pads under the carpet near the slipper that switches on your stereo. Right, so as he goes, God, look at the size of them slippers. And the stereo goes, right, you bastard. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> so you, know, you can cheer the world up by doing things like that. A thing I haven't noticed in England, which is a very, very good thing. Well, that is, it's a good thing you haven't got it. It's in Scotland, they say. Well, that's all from television tonight. Uh, I bid you all a very, very good night. And especially those of you who live alone. <laughs> you know what? I just reminded them. <laughs> and, uh, some of them are terrifying, they say. And those of you who live alone, don't forget to lock all... <laughs> the windows and, and, and stuff like that and make sure the flamethrower's working and, and the government pincher's got the elastic band round the willy. Keep it out. Don't let it nod off. I always wanted to be in charge of that bit of the programme. <laughs> you see, especially those of you who live alone. <laughs> For God's sake, don't look behind you! <laughs> don't turn right! <laughs> Another one they do is they say, and that's all tonight, and I hope you enjoyed the programmes as much as we did. <laughs> we, we also enjoyed them the first time round, and <laughs> yes, it's been great fun. And in the interest of safety, don't forget to switch off your TV before you go to bed. And for super safety, take the plug out of the wall altogether. <laughs> because the house could go on fire. <laughs> the whole family could be barbecued. <laughs> and I'd say, all right, enough, I must do, do If I was the guy doing that, I'd sit, I'd sit at the desk, going, right, 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 he'll be near the telly, he'll be stretching his hand out, he'll put it off. Leave it alone! <laughs> do as you're told! Get back to your seat, I'm not finished! <laughs> it's okay for them! Charlie's Angels, yeah, they're on every damn night. Well, it's my turn. I've got the switch. I'm in control of this station. And now the end is near. <laughs> Get away from the switch, you psychopath! <laughs> so, <that's, laughs> but these adverts, there's the big slipper. And save pounds! They have a pound sign that goes down and down and down. <laughs> Save! Boom, boom, boom. That's the S's. Cut your own hair! <laughs> with this thing! <laughs> and, then, and they have this lethal looking thing! <laughs> with things down each side and a handle. And you, you, of course you buy it and you go... My God! <laughs> the minute you... Three feet from your hair a big chunk falls out of sight! <laughs> Because hair's like that. You know, you've, you've, you've always, the barber always feels the, the, the hair that's dead as, you, as he's cutting your hair. You don't, you just see the result. But when you're actually just chipping away, it's a huge, it feels like a massive big lump. Oh my God. But I'll, I'll give you a bit of advice. Where are you going? Get back on your feet. <laughs> Nobody leaves. Okay, lock the door. You're stolen something. <laughs> Nobody leaves this building. I'll get him. Where's my bloody gun? <laughs> right. So if you buy that thing, 
And you'll be in the bathroom trying it because you don't want your family to see that you've bought it. <laughs> the, the normal thing is go, oh, bugger that, <laughs> and leave it. Throw it immediately in the bin. Because the time will come when you're out with the lads or whatever, you're at a party, a bit pissed. Yay! <laughs> Take them in, do you? <laughs> oh, there's that thing! <laughs> hey, hey! <laughs> That'll do me! That's brilliant! It's a doggo! Look at that! <laughs> Arthur Scargo! <laughs> There's another great thing. It's uh, no, what is, an energy suit. <laughs> and it's like a sleeping bag that you wear when you're sitting in the house. It's your sleeves and things. And, and the idea is to save energy, so you put your big suit on and your slipper there. <laughs> And you cut each other's hair if the telly's boring. <laughs> and there's another fabulous thing. Incontinence knickers. <laughs> there's always too many incontinence knickers. I think they were expecting a sort of plague of incontinence. <laughs> I think <laughs> maybe it was at the last budget or something. <laughs> they expected to sell a lot of them. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> And I was, I was looking at this incontinence stuff and I thought, I'm, 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 like, I'm, I don't want to laugh at incontinent people, right? <laughs> <laughs> it must be terrible, right, being incontinent. You know you get all dressed to go out and you go, psst. Oh, no. <laughs> Change it, you can't buy white clothes. You can't buy grey suits, you go, psst. Right. Because young people are incontinent too. I mean, it strikes at all ages. Suppose he's a young, trendy guy. Hey. Hey, you guys. He's trying to sneak back to his seat. Get back! You haven't missed a thing. I was only killing time to get back. Go on. <laughs> So the guy's young and trendy. Says, and then he sees the advert, right, that'll do me. Give us a pair of them. <laughs> Give us a bit of that. <laughs> That's the very fellows for me. <laughs> the see through plus fours. <laughs> The job at St Andrews <laughs> on a rainy day. <laughs> then get the trendy baggy trousers on. And off to the discotheque giving it a bit of that, yeah. <laughs> hey, how you doing? What's your sign? Sagittarius, all right. <laughs> yeah, half man, half horse, yeah. <laughs> License to shit in the street, that's good. <laughs> Not a jot. What's happening later, yeah? <laughs> Just seven gallons down each leg. <laughs> <laughs> Into the toilet and loosen the thing like that. <laughs> the tens level of whoosh, disappears. <laughs> oh, they're fabulous. You should read these adverts. They're in the energy suit. See, so you can wear them under your energy suit. <laughs> and there's a tray. 
There's a great tray you can get for sticking on the side of the settee. <laughs> it clamps on. In case you're a bit overheated when you're watching Starsky and Hutch, you go, oh, not, not the yellow grey all over the carpet. And it's got holes in it. So your stuff sits well in, wedged in. Your tea and the custard creams are all in wee places. <laughs> You see, your energy suits to save energy, so you switch off all the heating and get the suit on. <laughs> Nick here's cutting the hair. <laughs> and oh, my favourite. Dog bags. <laughs> Keep dog hair off the furniture. <laughs> this breakthrough. Dog bag. <laughs> and it's a bag you put the dog in. <laughs> times out his day, Special bag for the bungee. Put the <laughs> Keep feathers out the carpet. <laughs> so your dog's in the bag. And you're all sitting with a big slipper each. <laughs> Watching the telly. Unless you're a super duper family, you get one big slipper for the whole family. <laughs> well, you've all got a big slipper each, and the mother says to the father, Are you <laughs> I'm just nipping out. <laughs> I'm just nipping out to the toilet. What? Why don't you put on a cup of tea? I'm just... <laughs> anyway, that's... <laughs> and the other bit about my life before I got here to this stage you know, to this part of my life, and uh, is I, I used to be a folk singer, but uh, I was dreadful. <laughs> I had a voice like a goose farting in the fog. <laughs> the whole thing limited me a bit much, you know. You can only go so far with dead lifeboat men, then you get kind of stuck. <laughs> and, uh, and mining disasters. And, and it doesn't make you attractive to women at all. <laughs> so a man held up a thing there in the set and spoiled my flow. Uh, and I'm supposed to... Uh, would anybody like to ask me a windswept and interesting question? <laughs> Come on! Yes, you can do it! <laughs> See, what I was... Funny enough, I was talking to Robbie Coltrane about this a wee while ago. We did a programme recently, me and Mr Coltrane. And uh, we were talking about the way real people, you know what I was talking about, all that, and the, the way real people hear it, Chelsea go to parties, hear him, hear him, love you very much, hide still. Man, shut up. <laughs> See, now I loved that. I used to go to parties and listen to these men singing. For years, I didn't know it was English. <laughs> I thought it was some weird Scottish language. I went round the music shops of Glasgow trying to find the words. Cheer well. How does it uh, go? <laughs> Uh, see, uh, well, it's a, uh, it goes, uh, hit him hard. Hit him hard. Hit him hard. No, I don't know that one. So. <laughs> and they weren't like London kind of showbiz parties. You get a huge carry out first, you get a dozen beers and a half bottle of whiskey. Right. So you better get some Bacardi, there might be women there. Oh, OK. <laughs> <laughs> and then with this carry-out bag, you've seen these carry-out bags. I know they're sort of... You, well, I don't know if they've got them in England now. They certainly didn't. They used to have them. It's a carrier bag with a brewery on the side there. And off you go, looking for a party. <laughs> now that, that, I mean, you, you haven't been invited any. You don't get invited. This sort of happen. So you get the bag and then you go along these tenement streets listening. <laughs> and 
in from a window, you hear, Hurry, Paul. <laughs> Doing a big man. Easy, up we go. <laughs> and then when you get there, if it's ever happens to you, just tell them Jimmy said it was okay. <laughs> There's always a Jimmy in the room. I think I met a guy down the boozer there. Jimmy says just to come right up. What do you look like? Oh, he was a bit pissed, you know. <laughs> well, that'll be him, the guy. <laughs> There's somebody upside down behind the telly. <laughs> the man, it's a very man. <laughs> <laughs> Sit in, son, give us a song. Hey, ho! <laughs> hey, ho! <laughs> and there's another thing about Scotsmen. They always sing about being far away from Scotland when they're still there. <laughs> <laughs> Though I'm far across the sea. <laughs> Not. You shut your face. It's the only song your father knows right through. Be quiet. I'm very far away. And, <laughs> and of course, everybody likes to sing. And, and, and they sometimes they spin a bottle. And when it points at you, it's your turn and you have to do a thing, you know. And if you only know the one song, well, somebody might sing it before you. And that's you. You have to leave. Go home. Oh, that's it. I'm off. So, yeah, it's happened to me. I used to be the wild side of life. Hard oh, by the wild side of life. <laughs> and it's the wild. Hang went back to the wild. Who said that? What's the one? Do you know what a, a who is? A who? That's where the old rugged cross stands on. He fired away on a hill. <laughs> there was a guy who used to come round. Do you know the tenement buildings are uh, the tenement buildings are in squares, and in in the centre of the the square, there is the back green or the back court. We called it the back court. And buskers used to come round on a Sunday. All these wounded people, you know. Because I, I, I was born in 1942, so it was like the late 40s, I saw these men going, oh, oh. They're now, they are now working in national car parks. They've all got a leg like that. Like, hey! Hey, you! Hey, you can't be put that in here! This disorder. <laughs> Them and barbers, uh, what do you make of that, Thatcher? <laughs> hey! So, <laughs> I'm phoning the police, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, help us all. <laughs> but it's, it's strange. The people who sing at parties, they don't why these buskers come round the back like that. And it was a Sunday morning, and they had it all sussed. Because we, we lived on the side of the block, there were Irish immigrants, you know, Conley and Flanagan and all these people. And on the other side were Highland people, all the McDonald's and, and Morrison's and Campbell's and whatever, over there. And he would sing Protestant stuff over there. Hey, hardy old <laughs> And he'd come over to us and go, Happy Buddy! <laughs> and we used to heat pennies. You get a pair of <laughs> you get a penny and a pair of pliers <laughs> and heat it on the gas. <laughs> ah, <me buddy. laughs> there you go. Oh, thanks very much. <laughs> the priest used to come round visiting the houses, you know, to, to see how everybody was doing. And, and they were always wee lonely men. We could, they always looked cold priests. They were rather clean, you know, cold looking men. They'd come creeping about and say, Here's a priest coming! Put that television off! Right, get to your rooms! Come on, hurry, get to your damn rooms! The priest's coming up the bloody stairs! Get to your damn rooms! <laughs> 
And now, see, priests think the world is full of broken televisions. <laughs> Everywhere they go, it's not working. <laughs> see, a guy once told me the Queen thinks the world smells like paint, because ten feet in front of her, there's always a guy going... <laughs> But these, these tellies, are, and they've got no telly in the, in the chapel house, so he's just out wanting to see Charlie's angels. <laughs> and as I say, I lived in the tenements there, and there was a kind of, there was a warmth about the whole thing. There was, I've always seen tenements as kind of vertical villages. People say, oh, the deprivation, oh my, <laughs> nonsense. When you're a wee boy, it's not like that. You know, it, it, it felt great, you know, there's all these nice neighbours and and they had big wooden toilet seats then. You know, luxuries. You know, you didn't lose the power of your legs reading the Sunday paper. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah, maybe it's my age. I seem to, I can't walk halfway through the... <laughs> 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 oh, oh, oh. <laughs> needles can't get out of the damn thing. It's important for you. Oh, my God. <laughs> The only other time I ever felt like that, I had a drink in America called a zombie. <laughs> Have you ever drank zombies? It's a kind of muddy coloured. I would advise you to do it. It's an extraordinary concept. You get drunk from the bottom up. <laughs> You're perfectly lucid. Talking away, oh yeah, I've been there. Yeah. Have you got the time that was that British time? You've been very, oh, terrific jet set in her bane. That's all you need to go to the toilet. <laughs> Your legs are pissed. <laughs> Excuse me, I'll just go to the toilet. <laughs> and you can't get up, you see? <laughs> Look at my <laughs> It's like Chick Murray once told me he fell in the street and a woman said to him, did you fall? He said, no, I'm trying to break a bar of chocolate in my back pocket. <laughs> When the priest come to the house, the mother says, and see, in the, in the tenements, you'd put a bit, you know, a bit poorish. In the winter, you'd throw coats on the bed for the kids. <laughs> yeah, a bit of coat there, keep you warm. <laughs> oh, God. The very thought. <laughs> <laughs> but it was actually brilliant, because you could wear them in the dark and go about <laughs> playing things. Right, you wear the fur coat, and I'll wear this big thing. <laughs> And the priest in having the corned beef sandwiches and the custard creams. Have, a, come, have another crumpet, Father. That's what they're there for. Come on, get it down. <laughs> I'm sorry about it, Mrs. Connolly. There's bedlam in the room, but... Uh... Will you be quiet? <laughs> We're trying to be quiet in there! I can hardly hear myself thinking here! I'm trying to talk to Father Flanagan here! The noise is deafening. <laughs> it's him, Mummy! It's him again! <laughs> he's taking more than his fair share of the coat! <laughs> what are you talking about, coat? There's no coat in there! I don't know, it's a fertile imagination, but... <laughs> the coats are all in the cloak room! <laughs> it's a room in kitchen! Bloody cloak room! She thinks it's a dance hall, she's in. <laughs> the coats are in the cloak room, and well, you know it! <laughs> <laughs> Near the luncheonette, <laughs> next to the breakfast bar. <laughs> <laughs> it's an eider down. <laughs> this stupid girl coat. <laughs> I don't know where they get it. She must have thought it was one of them doovy jackets. <laughs> eider down. <laughs> what are you saying, father? What were you saying? <laughs> What were you saying about God there, fella? What was that? All right enough. You have a custard cream, that's fine. And you don't say, bedlam, bedlam, bedlam. Will you stop that in there? I won't tell you. I won't tell you again. It's him, mommy. It's him again. What's he doing this time? He's shoving his legs through the sleeves of the eye. <laughs> Do 
See, I've always had, I've always had trouble with, with, with communication. And it started at home. I, you know, nobody could ever talk to me. You know, you say, Dad? I say, what? <laughs> you know, and everybody I knew was the same, all my friends. And the, the people couldn't communicate properly with them. They didn't talk about generation gaps because it wasn't a problem. You just battered the children. Into, <laughs> stupid person! <laughs> and on it went. It was just... But they used to say strange things to you. Say, can I go out on my bike? What? Bike? I'll give you bike! <laughs> about me, boy. <laughs> Can I go to the pictures? What? <laughs> pictures, is it? Oh, pictures, you, my lad. <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> There's lots of things I don't know. I'll make you smile on the other side of your face. <laughs> Slash me! <laughs> I mean, there's one they use in Scotland. I'll take my hand off your face, my boy. <laughs> it's the putting on at high speed I didn't fancy. <laughs> no. It's good. It was weird. They, they also developed this thing of telling you not to do something by telling you to do it. That's right. <laughs> Sorry, just leave your underwear lying on the floor. <laughs> That's right, don't bother about another soul in the whole world, only your stupid self. <laughs> just leave it lying there along with your stinking socks. <laughs> just leave it lying there for me to pick up. But that's what I'm done. Do <laughs> now get into that room and don't let me hear a sound out of you. Don't let me hear you laughing, or for God's sake, I will come marching in there and give you something to laugh at. <laughs> I think he's going to tell us a joke. <laughs> Wrong! <coughs> Anybody thought of a question yet? <laughs> I think the troops are beginning to panic. Oh, Michael Parkinson's going to ask me something! <laughs> yes! Yes! Yes, Michael! I know him! He's my personal friend! Yeah, that's what you want to know! I thought you weren't really talking to me! <laughs> it's been such a long... Just a minute, I'll get back to my famous place. <laughs> yes, Michael. Well... <laughs> I mean, you are, you are a, a considerable traveller, aren't you? I mean, oh, the, indeed. You are. A windswept <laughs> and interesting traveller. Author of a, of a well-written and best-selling book on travel called Gullibus Travel. Sab and Groovy Book Company, That's yes. Right. I just wonder what you Published made. Published by your good self. This is true. <laughs> you had years plugging yourself on my show, mate. No, why should I put it? <laughs> what I was going to ask you about was travel. I mean, do you think it broadens or narrows the mind? And which is the place you've been to? I mean, particularly sort of Australia. I mean, Australia, is that worse than playing? Australia is a wondrous, fab and groovy place. <laughs> And, and travel narrows the mind. <laughs> it narrows it to that size. If you wish to know anything, don't travel. And it gets worse every year. The more I travel, the more I miss my own bed. <laughs> Do you ever think about your bed that way? I can have the, the further away I go, the weirder people get. And the drums never stop. <laughs> <laughs> and Australia's OK. Yeah. Needs a population transplant, but it's OK. <laughs> Pretty strange. They call you poofter all the time, <laughs> which is disconcerting. I wore an earring, and it's, I went to this extraordinary thing. I was playing in a town called Huayala, which is a real toilet. <laughs> <laughs> it's a shipyard and an iron ore terminal. And it's, oh, yeah. Caesar's Palace, Huayala. And, <laughs> and the man said, have you ever been an iron knob? Because <laughs> the whole thing was a bit bizarre. Because the previous week's guest had been Tiny Tim, and I thought, this whole thing's a bloody nightmare. <laughs> I'm not really here. 
And he said, I'd like to take you to Iron Knob. I said, I'm sure you would. <laughs> People have tried before you. <laughs> I am open to offers. What? He said, I'd like to take you to Iron Knob. He says, because in Iron Knob, they have the cleanest hotel in Australia. It's the Australia's one of my favourite countries on the earth, but it's certainly the strangest. It's, the, it's not a, a hysterically funny story, but it's the strangest thing I've ever seen. We, we drove from Wyala to Iron Knob to this hotel that they hose down every day. <laughs> it has a big mountain made of iron ore. Like somebody walked along and said, that's made of iron ore. And they ex they're slowly exporting this mountain to Japan who are buying it, but a handful. And these people are getting wealthy and they all live in this hotel and the, the red dust settles on it and they hose the hotel down. And it's, it's the cleanest hotel in Australia. So I went in and there was a man, it was like deliverance. There was people all hanging about the end of the bar. <laughs> and they looked as if they'd been stood like that for years. <laughs> Those people with the two front teeth that fall down, the skip caps. And we went in, there was myself and several other guys of my crew, and most of them had earrings on, you know, and I had one on. It was a strawberry thing I was wearing at the time. I found it made me exotic and interesting. <laughs> people used to sidle up to me and say, my God, you're windswept and interesting. <laughs> and I would come in, I come into the bar and, and this wee man, I can't do an Australian accent. Oh dear God, I can't. Difficulty with Scottish accent. <laughs> and this man, not really. Th this man said, Oh, yeah, the poofters are here. <laughs> We're out on the round of beer. And it was poofter, poofter this, and poofter the other, and poofter this, and poofter that. But, oh, it's really boring. And there was a, a toilet seat behind the bar. One of those horseshoe shaped ones with little medals on it. And it was obviously the trophy for the pool. There was a pool table in the bar. So I was looking at it, you know, and he said, yeah, poofter, pommy poofter. And I said, excuse me. He says, yep. And I said, who took your picture out the frame? <laughs> It he, he, he radically changed. He went, hey, how do you do? Drinks all round, nobody buys drinks. I'm giving it that. And he, but it was extraordinary. His name was Smith, and he was the garbage collector in Wyala. He just, and he was worth a fortune. And he would say, Smith's the name, shit's the game. <laughs> and Smith's the name, shit's the game, right? Right around the whole crew. And then sort of halfway along, he thought, I'm being boring here. And he would say, shit's the game, the name's the same. <laughs> It's a great country, Australia. I do like it. Really? Really? Hello. Oh, God, an Australian. <laughs> Julie, when I was growing up in Wyala... <laughs> <laughs> they call me Iron Knob. <laughs> we always used to say that the Scots were very tight with their money. What, what about you and money? What do you do with your money? I, I don't really have a very much money. <laughs> I, <laughs> I spend it all in Langens. You've probably seen the picture in the paper. <laughs> I've, made, I've tried... I do not understand money. I've tried extremely hard to be Scottish about it and keep some. <laughs> you know, I, I, but it seems to... I can't handle it. I just, and when I get ahead of the game, I say, God, you've done well, buy something. And I have nothing again. <laughs> and I've tried understanding Dow Jones Index and the Financial Times 20 share it. I have no idea what it is. And I'm, I'm just, I will never have money. Some people will have money and others are going to be skint. Some, some are going to be famous and skint. And I am one of them. <laughs> I am one, and I've heard all the stories about Scottish people who dropped 50 pence, bent down to pick it up, hit them in the back of the head. <laughs> copper wire. <laughs> copper wire was invented by two Scotsmen fighting over a penny. But I, <laughs> I can't handle it. I, I don't know. I have any, any money. I've got no money stories either. Anybody ask me? Really? Jam. Mm. Billy, when I first came to London and spoke with my Scottish accent, I was so conscious of it feeling very flat-footed. And, and, and I wondered, when you came to London to begin with, did you have awful problems with the Scottish accent? I did. You know. 
It was, I, well, I didn't really have a problem. I kind of, uh, people treated me a bit like I was a Swahili poet. <laughs> they found they would make me say things, I just could not believe that I was speaking in English. And now when I listen to my old albums, I can understand, because I, I liked it that way. And when I go home, I, I love to play in Scotland and be a comedian because I can, suddenly I, I get the luxury of speaking at the right speed. You know, I really, I go like a train and nobody, like in England you wouldn't understand it. And it was sort of, how can I put it? You speak a bit like a pillar box, you don't move your mouth at all. And you point with your feet. You know, people say, excuse me, could you direct me to Sunny Hall Street? You go, aye, sorry. <laughs> Much. I think it's something to do with the climate. <laughs> and we're, we're a bit strange because most of us are conceived while our parents are fully clothed. <laughs> it's the climate, you know, <laughs> two seasons, June and winter. There's <laughs> oh, a lovely old variety theatre joke. See, most of the policemen in, in, in Glasgow he came from the Highlands, those big beefy Highland red-faced guys. And, and they always, and they told jokes about them like the way people tell Irish jokes about silly Highlanders. And, and the great end of the pier, Scottish one, is the policeman who found a drunk man lying in Sucky Hall Street and dragged him into Hope Street because he couldn't spell Sucky Hall Street. <laughs> <laughs> oh, a great vision. There was the line they say about them. When he's questioning a wee boy, he says, did the window break on both sides when you threw the stone? <laughs> Were you on the bicycle when you fell off? Just kind of, yeah. I don't like to ask me anything. God, I'm embarrassed. Yes, I love to ask you. Oh, look! Hello. I've seen you in uh, the pictures. Oh, <laughs> I'd love to know. You bring out the mother in me. What does your mother think of you? She doesn't like me very much. <laughs> she, she does. She actually likes me. She's, uh, I had the most extraordinary experience of, uh, of probably that any adult could have. And I, I met my mother when I was an adult. <laughs> uh, really, my, my mother and father uh, parted when I was a small child. And it was a deeply embarrassing thing for me, because I really blew it. My mother, who was obviously very nervous, came up to me at a gig. And, uh, and she said, you're Billy Connolly? And I said, yeah, at reaching for the pen. <laughs> And I felt really stupid. It was, it was extraordinary. I'm glad you asked me that. It was an extraordinary moment in my life to be confronted by my mother. I was looking for bits that looked like me, you know. <laughs> and she looks a wee bit like me, you know, around the eyes and the nose there. But I think she's uh, kind of... We don't keep much in touch. I don't really keep all that much in touch with any of my relatives. But uh, I think she's like my father, who we keep more in touch, my father and I. He tried to, to like what I did. What I do, it, but he's a he's a practicing Catholic. He's a devout Catholic, and I did all that stuff about the Last Supper and making fun of all that thing. And he was deeply wounded by the whole affair. And then slowly, when I stopped doing it, he got kind of better about it and more open-minded. And then he came to a phase where he he tried to look interested in my show business, about which he knows nothing at all. He's not, I'm the only one in the history of the entire family ever to go to the theatre, far less perform in it. And, and he, he would say things like, he would look interested. Oh, yeah, hello, Bill. Is this you back in town again? And I'd say, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I was all hairy and beads and flared bottoms and peace and love. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, ding a ling a ling, Bill. <laughs> ding, 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 ding. It's me. Yippee, yeah, we're home again. He said, yeah, is that you back? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and he would say, busy? I'd say, yeah, yeah, I'm OK. He'd say, have you any jigs this week? <laughs> <laughs> and, and jigs, they have remained. You know when somebody makes a mistake like that and it's too late to, to tell them? <laughs> oh, actually, it's gig, father. <laughs> so jigs, i say, I've got a few jigs next. <laughs> I've got a new guitar once. And uh, I'd spent a lot of money on this Gibson guitar. And uh, I said, hey, I've got a new guitar. He said, oh, oh really? <laughs> saying that to my father, you know, I was like saying, doormat, father. <laughs> I opened the case, I said, look. Hmm. 
And she could see his wee face there. I said, what can I say about this bloody thing? <laughs> hmm. And he looks at the neck of the guitar and he says, it's got a lovely handle. <laughs> and so, so handle it has remained. So I take my guitar handle to my jigs and I... <laughs> and they, I think they're quite reasonably proud of what I do. You know, I think success brings its own sort of pride and jollity, no matter what you do. I don't know what Hitler's mother thought, but... <laughs> <laughs> That's a, my boy! <laughs> It's my boy over there, the one with a fancy walk, yeah. <laughs> he never hits his mother, that boy. <laughs> Vegetarian too. Oh, my shit. I bought a book, do you remember? I bought a book in Edinburgh, I couldn't believe my eyes. It was a uh, vegetarianism, uh, Buddhism and vegetarianism. And I, I bought it because there was people looking at me in the bookshop. I said, I better buy something interesting. <laughs> no. I was actually interested because I stopped eating meat and I was feeling a bit weird about it. I've questioned it all the time. I say, why don't we get tablecloths, you know? <laughs> <laughs> what is it about vegetarians they won't give us tablecloths? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> it's true in those that vegetarian restaurants. They said they're all the bloody youth hostels. <laughs> People in tartan shirts, hello! <laughs> tell you what anything is. <laughs> Do you go to these health food shops? I'm going to lose the I'm going to lose the porridge. What's that? Oh, it doesn't know a muesli. <laughs> what a muesli nut bag it looks like. <laughs> but, it, but there's never any varnish on the table. It's the wire brush them all down. <laughs> all I want's a tablecloth and a waiter. See what I was telling you about touching your willy? Have you noticed how many waiters touch? They call that, yeah, can I help you? Wait, what would you like as a main course? <laughs> So quick to go like that, she's never sure if he actually did it. <laughs> Are you the same, sir? <laughs> and people touch the willy for some reason when they look out the window. <laughs> they say, How's the, what's the weather like? You know? <laughs> Couldn't check if my bike's still outside, oh yeah. <laughs> It's, it's really, I, I don't even begin to understand that kind of behaviour. But of, of course, you see, vegetarianism, it sounds like Presbyterianism to me, and I've always felt uncomfortable, as if I've joined some sect, you know. Can I do... Barbara Dixon, are you going to ask me something? Yes, please. I knew her, you know. <laughs> I was just Ages going ago, to... folk singer, same as me. I was just going to say that you, we cut our eye teeth, as it were, in, in folk clubs in the 60s. Do you remember those days fondly, Billy, or do you think it's all a bit sort of funny nowadays? I think it was great. I, I loved the folk... Uh, see, and you'll remember, when, when I came into the folk scene, it was full of... See, I was a welder, right? And I had been in the Territorial Army, and so I was a really boring kind of guy. Right? <laughs> yes! Yes, I support this country! I will die! I'm will... <laughs> a real asshole. So, <laughs> and I thought, I'd love to. I saw this guy one day. I went to a folk club. I wanted to, I called it campfire music, you see. I'd seen it in television. I thought, I love that campfire stuff. <laughs> it was Pete Seeger on a, a program called Alex A While. And I went to the, the George Square information office in Glasgow where you're supposed to ask how to get to Loch Lomond. <laughs> and I said, how can I hear some of this campfire stuff? And they said, sorry. I said, you know, a bit of the old guitar and cowboy songs and all that stuff. And I went along and there was a man there, Ronnie Gilchrist, still a friend of mine with an earring and long hair. I'd never seen a man like that before. I thought, oh my God, look at these people. And I instantly became one, high heels and hair. I can go hear it well, I go, <laughs> and, and I bought a banjo, and I met a man in Edinburgh, I'd never met people like it. And there was a man, he, I never, I can't remember his name, he had a dachshund. He was like a long dog. And he, he was strange, kind of, he walked in slow motion. He, his dog walked faster, he walked slow. Like I can't remember his name, but he played the banjo. And so few people did. And he said, I could show you some banjo. And I said, oh, great, come on up to my place. And away he went like that, and the dog. 
And we went up, and this man lived in a tent inside a house. <laughs> and we sat in his tent because he couldn't afford to heat the room. So we sat in the tent and he showed me, what was that? Skip to Maloo. Ding, 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 ding. And it was brilliant. And I loved it. And it went got nice and nice. And I loved it until about the same time as yourself, Barbara, but maybe eight years ago, ten-ish. It got awful, the whole folk thing. Because social workers liked it. And uh, <laughs> student teachers and Christian groups went, Hi, I'm the Lord of the Dance set here. <laughs> <What's that fucker? laughs> Play with a thumb like that. I, I am the Lord of the Dead Set here. I'll do, do all, whatever you'll be here. <laughs> as soon as I see a duffel coat, I lose interest. <laughs> duffel coat and kickers. It's a cry for help. I am the Lord of the. <laughs> <laughs> so I got out, you know, and I hated bands with the. Uh, so what I hated was I would go to gigs and I'd drive past wee men and women, you know, go along the street. And we'd get to the gig and it would be all full of duffel coats. And we'd play the thing and leave and there'd be all these wee ordinary people. And I thought, I want them. The ones who were walking past the concert, I wanted the public. And so I, I went to work in men's clubs. And Jesus, I got them. Oh, <laughs> it was awful. And then, thankfully, I got telly. Like, Bill Tennant in Scotland and then Mike Parkinson. And then, whoosh, fame. <laughs> Hi, Fiddly D. An actor's life for me! <laughs> Talking about which, I got a part in a play in Glasgow. They called Clydeside. And the director was Keith Darvill, a really nice bloke. And he, he came to the pub where all the hairy people were, all the folk singers and poets and stuff. It was called the Scotia Bar. And he said, uh, are you a musician? I said, oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, musician sat so well on my shoulders. Oh, musician, but yes. <laughs> I said. <laughs> he says, you're the very man I'm looking for. I said, just show me the way. And we went to the Citizens Theatre in Glasgow. And uh, he said, let's hear you play. And I went, rinky tinky poo. He went, that's very good. Yeah, I said, I also play the banjo. What? I said, I play the otter heart. Brilliant. You're the man. He said, I'm doing a play called Clydeside with Matt McGinn and various Scottish actors. It's going to be good. I'd like you to do the entire music. And I said, oh, yeah, something inside me fell on its side, you know. <laughs> Owning up time. I said, well, actually, I'm a bit flash, but I'm not really very good. I don't know, I couldn't establish keys and all that, but I know a guy who can. So I went down and I got a guy called Tam Harvey, and we went up together, and I said, this is him. And, and we played together, and he said, I love both of you. But it was extraordinary. This was in my break to get out of the folk scene. I didn't know, I was in this, I had never seen a play before, you see. So I was in the first play I ever saw, I'm sitting on the stage, and I found it incredibly interesting. So, we'd be, and I, so I didn't know what a cue was. I'd never had one before. It was always like, two 20 minute spots, on you go, cash in the hand, thank you very much. That cue got me, so we go, hey, I'll do you, off. Oh, thanks very much. And that was my showbiz, and people used to talk about tabs, I said, sorry. You know what? No idea. But so I was sitting watching the play, and of course I'm supposed to be in it and reading through the script. And uh, the play is going along, and people are saying things to each other. And the guy say, "Yes, oh how tough it is down the mines, my God!" And it breeds a certain type of man, you know, Maggie. Do you remember young Jamie Fires and the old Tom Drew? <laughs> and I'm sitting with a guitar going. And I went, and I said, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and the director says, well, I said, that's fine. <laughs> and he's asking me, I didn't know. I said, oh, oh yeah, I, I, oh, I play when he says that. He says, yes. <laughs> oh, brilliant, right, right, eh, right, right, Tom, right, I want to, young Jamie. Oh. Yeah. But I come in, the f I've often, lay awake screaming, thinking about this. I come in the next day, and I got the Keith Darville. If you ever meet him, he'll tell you. And I had the script, and I had the cues underlined with a black felt tip. I said, look, I've got this idea. See, every time I have to play, 
I've underlined it here <laughs> in the script. I said, Jesus, what a breakthrough! Eh? <laughs> Don't tell any of them! <laughs> Isn't that odd? But look, it's just about time to wrap up the, the, this thing. Oh, you're going to add something? I was. Oh, God. <laughs> it's Michael Aspel, personal friend of mine. <laughs> He probably knows Mike Parkinson very well. <laughs> he should, he's nicked his place in the telly. So... <laughs> he was keeping his seat warm. It was the first one. No, listen. If you had not been born in 1942... Yes. When would you have liked to have been born? When would I have liked to...? I think I'd have the same again. <laughs> no, I've, I thought recently about how th this age was made for people like me. Adventurous, handsome heroes. <laughs> I could save the world given half a chance. And I, no, I think this is the best ever era in the history of the entire earth. And I love every second. I swear I, I do feel like that. I often felt I'd like to be... Do you know what this how I went? Wait a minute. There's Doris Stokes, right? Now, Doris, you must have met in your life, since, well, since you announced this talent that you have, you must have met so many people who say, I think I've lived before, you know, right? I have met a million, but have you noticed they've all been the Queen of Egypt? Yes. Uh, and uh, <laughs> nobody ever swept the floor at Singer Sewing Machine Factory. <laughs> have you noticed that? Oh, I've met them all, yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, that, that's what I mean. I think... This time around, if all those spiritual people are right and that you do come back and you do get another crack at it until you get it right, I think this is my first time in. <laughs> because it's a gas. I mean, I must say, I do like it. I wouldn't mind being a beetle or a cockroach, but I wouldn't like to make love to another one. <laughs> it's... So that, did you want to ask me something, love? Um, what do you do with groupies? I'll be crazy. Well, <laughs> on a Thursday. <laughs> I'll tell you. <laughs> I'll whip out my willy. <laughs> that gives him a laugh. <laughs> I'll flip it out. <laughs> I say, there you go. <laughs> I say, how do you like them apples? <laughs> and he invariably say, no thanks, I'll smoke my own. <laughs> no way. I... <laughs> do you know the most awful thing about it? Comedians don't get groupies. Oh. Well, don't feel sorry for me. Well, I've done quite well. You've probably read about it in the paper. <laughs> it's, it's, <laughs> comedians get guys telling them jokes. <laughs> hey, Bill. Hey, come here, man. Hey, hey, come here. Hold me a minute, darling. You stay there. Give me a minute. <laughs> about the nun and the four Alsatians. <laughs> Clean up and use it in your act. Oh, <laughs> right, Tommy. I never end in line of blokes. It's, it's appalling. And yet I've met some pimple-ridden Herberts <laughs> who were in the charts. Big queues of gorgeous women at the door. I've never understood it. I never will. I'm erudite. I'm urbane. I know a word or six. <laughs> I'm not scared, I'm a brave person. Look, fuck, 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 I'm on a telly! Fuck, fuck! Gee! I'm a brave person! I'm strong. I try my very best. But look, I'm going to leave you, and I'm going to leave you with a complaint. <laughs> this country is in a terrible state, according to some people, and I know why. Now, you blamed it on lots of things and all unemployment and the value of the pound and all sorts of other magic things. It's because the national anthem is boring. <laughs> no, no! Don't get me!
me wrong. I'm not arguing with the lyrics. <laughs> well, I am. <laughs> but not them all. I mean, I think the Queen should be saved. I think it's a great idea. <laughs> and, if, and if anybody's going to save her, God's the very chap. <laughs> Who am I to rock the boat? <laughs> not I. Nice person. Show business personality. Right. <laughs> It's an appalling song, and it's racist, and it's anti-Scottish, and the fourth verse is all about Marshall Wade coming up to give us a belt in the mouth, and I don't like it. And with a mighty rush, rebellious Scots to crush, oh, do you bloody think so? I don't see any rush to hand and to crush anybody. I rest my case. No. You see, if you when you look at the Olympic Games, we're going in with a flag. We've been lapped. The games haven't started yet. <laughs> These emergent nations are coming out. Right. We come from Jubilovia and we don't give a shit. <laughs> A national debt of 50 squillion pounds. <laughs> we will get the monkeys. God <laughs> save. All the other nations don't want us to win. Because when we win, it takes half an hour to flag down the bloody throne. God save. No wonder Daley Thompson scratched on his. Season up. <laughs> so I think it's time for a change. And I think a refreshing change would be to use a theme from the archers. Imagine it! Trooping of the colour! <laughs> the Queen sitting on a horse like that! <laughs> and then the public in the seat's going, rum de 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 So let's give it a bash here. One, two, three. I'll get one of them in the bedroom. Thank you. Do you want some more of the same? So. One, two, three, now, you, now just think. Now that's going to be the lyrics. We're not going to change a thing. It's going to be rum ti dum ti dum ti dum la 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 rum ti dum pa pum pa pum dum ti 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 ti. Just think the new immigrants can learn that on the bus and away in from Heathrow. Rum ti 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 so ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for listening to my inane drivel. It's been an absolute pleasure talking to you. You've made a happy man very old. <laughs>
The show is now over. <laughs> you have wasted your breath. <laughs> shouting more, more, more. <laughs> more, more, Bill, for twas wonderful. <laughs> Lay another wee funny one line it upon us. <laughs> it is not to be. <laughs> waste, waste not your energy. You'll only be fed up when you get to the chip shop and find it I'm first in the queue. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.